In this video, we're going to take a look at all of the out-of-the-box Revit electrical equipment and devices. As you can see here, we have some nice 3D representations of generators and transformers and switchboards that we can use when we model our electrical systems. So if this is something you find interesting and wish you knew, stay tuned and we will cover it all. Hey guys, this is Rob. Welcome to another Electrical Revit video. Let's get right into it. So I've created this separate Revit project that has as many of the electrical fixture and equipment that I could find brought into it so we can take a look at it. So what we have here up top is electrical fixtures Revit calls them, which are devices or loads like receptacles and motors, things like that. And then down here, we have a whole bunch of the electrical equipment for distribution, power pass through things like transformers and panels and switchboards. Let us start up here. And where these come from has varied over the renditions of Revit. And right now, this is 2024, and this has been this way for a few of these versions. But if you go up top to the insert and load family is how we used to do it. We used to go load family and it would automatically typically put you into libraries. And this is English Imperial for the U.S. U.S. And there used to be a number of folders here that would say annotation, uh, electrical, things like that. But now they have this little note here. Are you looking for content? Go to www.autodesk, and we can read it further down here, .com slash Revit content, or use load Autodesk family. So, our new option is not here, but next to load family is load Autodesk family, and there's a little cloud in it. So, load Autodesk family from the cloud. So, we can download families from the Autodesk site. So, let's click on load family. And you get this type of browsing window. And they've got all kinds of things in here. This is stuff that used to be in the folders with Revit. Now it's on the cloud. So you can go to annotations. And there's all kinds of annotations. Different tags. You know, there's even switches and bells. Most of this is tags. We've got a lot of symbols. So you can go through some of this. But it's just annotations. conduit. Here's some tags for conduit. So that's what's there. But what we are most interested in down here is under electrical. Right there. Now electrical has quite a bit of categories. If you just say electrical, what is in here is all 165 families that are available. You can filter that down by clicking on these headings. The architectural electrical, now there's 13 of those. And for architectural electrical electrical power, there's 12 of those. And then we have distribution versus terminals. So if we start looking at the architectural items, we have an electrical panel. We have these outlets. But what I'll show you is this outlet duplex, outlet GFI, outlet range, outlet triplex has caused a lot of confusion. Some of my viewers have written comments asking about these pieces not working. Well, what they mean is there's no electrical connections in these. These are purely architectural symbols. A lot of times an architect will do a very preliminary electrical plan and they will just show symbols where they want receptacles and switches and lights, things like that, but they, there's no connectivity. So this is an example of what you get if you pull out of the architectural folder. One's called outlet range single. Click on that. You can see over here, outlet range single. It does say electrical loads panel circuit number grayed out. If you look at the actual family types itself, edit type, and look at all the parameters, you will see that there is no electrical parameters involved. It is merely a symbol. And there's dimensions to it, things like that. It has a label for the range. So you could use this if you're just doing symbols. Well, we don't typically just do symbols. For example, the outlet, here's the here's just a duplex. Same thing. There is no electrical information in this, so it cannot be connected. You will not find the power 
symbol up top to connect it. And then this one called a triplex, probably something like the range where it's a, a three prong power connector. But again, it does not have any electrical data. So these are of no use to us electrically. So we need to get into the truly electrical, and in this case, they call it the MEP information because it has connections. Now they do have just connectors. If you're looking for some kind of a electrical connector that doesn't have much of a symbol associated with it, there's these. But I was more interested in the actual fixtures and equipment. So if you go through all these, you'll see there's things for appliances, fans, hair dryers, hand dryers, heaters. The terminals are like receptacles and things like that. So what I've done is I've gone through and pulled a bunch of these out. And even under the distribution, you'll find transfer switches and circuit breakers and starters, junction boxes, switchboards, panel boards. So I've pulled a bunch of these out already, so we can quit look at this quickly. So for example, the standard duplex out of the box Revit has electrical information. You can assign a voltage to it, you can assign a load classification, and you can assign a load. Now out of the box, it's set up for a 120 volt 180 VA, which is the NEC driven load for a standard convenience duplex receptacle. So you have that to use in your in your modeling. Now this can be changed. You can use this as a start and you can duplicate it and turn it into whatever you want. Let's say you want it to be a refrigerator receptacle and you can apply a different load. So there's a lot of options here. Now I must say that it's only set up for single phase because there's no phase parameter. So single at 120 or single at 240. I suppose if you're in Europe, you could go that way. And then they have one called a receptacle 220. What does that have in it? Let's look at that. That is, like I was just saying, it's just a 220 volt line, line to neutral for use in Europe. And you can have a load as well. So you have that. So this next one called special purpose receptacle. I was hoping that it had multiple phases but as it turns out it does not it is just a single phase just like the rest it is just a different looking symbol you could call this a uh, refrigerator's refrigerator symbol or something like that but it's just still a, a, a single phase so then we also have some other symbols now the thing about these built-in families is you're stuck with whatever symbol they give you and i know this is uh, probably some international symbols so you know they're trying to cover the entire world here and so some of these symbols are not symbols that that we typically use in the U.S. or at least that we don't use in our company. So if you need different looking symbols, that's when you get into family editing. And I do cover that in some of my videos. I'll be covering more of that. But if you're trying to do something out of the box, you're just trying to learn Revit, and you're fine with whatever symbols you get just to practice, these work out great. So, for example, a fan symbol. Let's see what we get electrically with a fan symbol. A voltage, and we do get a number of poles. We do get a load classification and a load. So you could change this to a two pole, 240 or 208 single phase, two pole piece of equipment. You can change this load classification to, you could create an HVAC load classification. Here's one here. So you can do quite a bit with this fan. Uh, it could end up being for um, our rooftop units. It could even be simple exhaust fan. You can do quite a bit with this. Now this hair dryer is interesting. If you look at the symbol up top here under my camera, it's actually a handheld hair dryer. <laughs> I have to say I've never, never modeled one of those before, but that's kind of an interesting interesting load and the other thing i want to show you is there's 3d aspects to these too which is kind of interesting if you're looking at some 3d views let me go to my cover sheet view which is a 3d view and you can see the hosted ones host to the wall nicely and show just a little little rectangle here's our hair dryer it looks like a handheld hair dryer 
Over here we have a hand dryer. It actually looks like a wall mounted hand dryer. So there is some good 3D elements to this if you're looking for that in your model. Here's the hand dryer. This one also has voltage, poles, load classification, and load. So if you don't mind, you know, that kind of a symbol, you can see it flips it upside down. And also I'll point out so far we've talked about hosted, except for this hair dryer. This hair dryer can be moved anywhere. But these I can only move laterally along the wall because they are actually hosted to the wall. This is a standalone heater that you could use for things. We've got poles, load class, parent load. So this is very modifiable. So that can be used. So again, if you can live with the symbol, symbology of this, and just put this symbol in your symbol list if you're trying to have a legend of your symbols, you're great. So I'm not going to go through every one of these, but you can see kind of the idea. We even have some junction boxes. If you just want to have a load that's just a junction box, nothing else connected to it right now, you can use this junction box dash load. In this one, there's a power factor and a load as an instance parameter. So you could have multiples of these and, and just change the load here rather than in the type. The type would set the voltage and number of poles and load classification, but the actual load now here is an instance. That's you know a different way to do that. We have a nice motor for just a generic motor. Maybe it's a pump. We have two different voltages here. Sometimes the voltage gets put in as just a, a text. See, if you do ABC, that is not a number. It's not a voltage. That is just a text. So it's really kind of useless for us. But down here, the actual voltage, you can't just type in letters here. You'll get an error. So that's a true number. And we type these in as 120 here in the U.S. Load classifications, you can go crazy with that. Any of those. And your load. So there are quite a few symbols here that work. If you want to have one that has a disconnect with it, we often show a disconnect with our motor. Use that. And then a few other things too. They have wet type transformer. And I need to put that down here with the rest of these. But that would be like your oil field transformer that comes from the utility. So that is what we have for electrical fixtures, the actual load devices. Well, by the way, if you're getting anything out of this that's helpful to you, I'd appreciate you clicking on that like button. And if you want to see more of this content specifically for electrical, please hit the subscribe and I appreciate it very much. Down here, we have electrical equipment for distribution. And we have a dry type transformer. If we look at that, we have all of the electrical information we need. You can set up the distribution system, primary voltage, load classification, number of poles, all that kind of thing. So we've got transformers. We've got some panel boards. Now it doesn't say in the description but if it doesn't say, it means it's recessed. So you can see that it is actually recessed into that wall. But down here, you've got all your voltage settings and amp settings, things like that. So we have a number of things here. And again, there's a 3D aspect to these. If I get down here to the equipment, you can see that if you're trying to do some 3D work, we've got a good looking dry type transformer. The panels are just rectangles in the wall. We have some surface mounted items. This here is an automatic transfer switch. Now this is one we need to take a look at. I did another video on the automatic transfer switches that come with Revit out of the box because the main problem they have is they only have a single electrical connection. Well, as you know, a transfer switch transfers between two sources. So to make this work, we actually had to go into this and edit the family and add a second electrical connection so we can connect it from our utility and from our generator. So there's a flaw in that one out of the box. So this one will be tough to use. But the other ones work okay. This is a uh, circuit breaker switchboard. It has an interesting look to it. But for just representing, you know, boards in your model, this works fine. It has the electrical information that you need. And there's things like a combination starter. We have... Uh, another panel board. This one's a surface panel board, not recessed. We have some metering switchboards if you want a metering look to it. 
And this one here looks like a motor control center. Yep. And so we do have some other nice 3D aspects to these. And we even have some generators. Now, as far as their dimensions and things like that, that can be adjusted. As you can see, here's width, length, height. Um, there's a lot of adjustments. And then here's other, who knows what these are. These are widths and radius and lengths within this model that might change some of the piping and things like that. So you can play around with those. And then we have here another dry type transformer, a larger one. And then this is our uh, wet type transformer, maybe a utility pad mount, oil filled. So that gives you kind of a rundown of all the electrical fixtures and equipment that come out of the box with Revit. I think we could actually, you know, create a model from this. So that's going to be another video I do is creating a, an electrical model with Revit out of the box families and see how far we can get with that through an entire project. Just a little spoiler alert. I think we're going to have trouble when it comes down to a one line or single line diagram, but we'll cover that when we get there. So I hope this little run through of the built in Revit families helps you out in your electrical modeling. And until next time.